All right, so before we start part two to start writing and coding and all of that, um, we're going to take a look at some things online and um, kind of get a general picture of the concept of part two of the class. Go ahead and go to your web browser. And let's go to the website developer.android.com. So developer.android.com is the main portal if you want to go uh, off and develop Android apps. Um, this is where you get the official documentation from the official parent company of, of Android. Uh, anyone know who is behind Android? What big company? Google. Google. So Google owns Android. Uh, operating system so if you've got an Android device it's powered by Google um, Google has their hands also in uh, Gmail and Maps and Google Plus and uh, what else uh, YouTube and lots of things so it's a big big company and um, if you've got an Android device that runs an operating system uh, Android uh, which is updated every once in a while and right now it's currently on Android 8 Point one, and if you wanted to develop an app for uh, Android, traditionally, uh, you would download the uh, Android software development kit, which is called Android Studio, which is like two gigabytes of download. Um, well, everything that you would need to learn how to make an Android app is on the Android developers portal. Well, let's say you also then want to, you've got that great idea for that app. Uh, someone just emailed me the other day that had uh, ideas for apps, and I'm like, okay, great. Uh, you're going to learn how to do this, uh, take the class, or read on your own. Well, when you learn how to uh, program for an Android app, then you then have to do it for uh, an iPhone app. So take a look at developer.apple.com. So Apple has their own portal with their own documentation and their own steps and such and their own control panel over on Android and over at Apple uh, we have this control panel where we submit our apps to the app stores where we um, then uh, go through the process of our app being then released for everyone as we work throughout the class uh, we're going to be testing on our own device and eventually we want it to go to other people's devices so we have to publish it. Part three of the class is the one that's going to focus on after we've got the app finished we need to actually publish it for people. And then the third platform you can go to developer.windows.com Now admittedly or maybe grudgingly, iPhones have the biggest mind share. Not the biggest market share, the biggest mind share. Meaning, a lot of pop culture and a lot of regular people think of a smartphone, it's an iPhone. Because of the marketing, the commercials, they got, into the, they got in the door first, perhaps. And um, it's not the only platform, of course. Android actually has the larger market share. More people globally use an Android device than an iPhone device, but the iPhones are much more famous. Have that, they have more of that market uh, mind share. Android devices have more of the market share. And Windows, or Microsoft, the company behind Windows, they were trying to get in on the market of uh, mobile devices as well a few years ago, and they had uh, their Windows phone platform. And they uh, gave it a shot for a few years and they weren't able to really do it. The iPhone and Android uh, market shares were just too big and, and Microsoft isn't quite doing phones anymore. There were various Windows phones in the market a few years ago. And I, I had some, I thought they were pretty cool, cool style and all of that, but they just never caught on. Uh, people were making apps. People weren't making enough apps for Windows phones. Uh, Microsoft though is still in the mobile space with their uh, various uh, tab uh, tablets and um, surfaces and all of that 
So in theory, Windows 10, the current version of Windows, can uh, be a lot easier ported to mobile or desktop or laptop devices. So let's say I wanted to reach an audience for all the three major platforms in market share more mobile would be Android then iPhone then Windows in general operating system market share it would be Windows then Android then iPhone so even though just by raw numbers iPhones have the smallest market share they have the most fame the most mind share and oftentimes developers make the most money on iPhone devices or iOS devices as opposed to Android devices there's been a culture for a long time about Android apps uh, they're free everything's free open source gimme gimme it's all free and then a developer doesn't profit as much on the Android operating system on, in the Android ecosystem and Apple has cultivated a generation of people that yeah I'll pay 99 cents for a song yeah I'll pay 99 cents for an app yeah I'll pay a little here a little there a little there and you make this money more on on iOS oftentimes um, of course um, it depends on the app and a variety of things um, and of course um, your mileage may vary uh, but we'll be covering the three platforms but that meant traditionally we need we need to learn Java to program an Android app we would need to learn Objective C and now Swift to program on iOS and we would need C sharp on Windows we would need to know three different huge programming languages to cover each platform and you'll say well I only want to do one I want to learn only uh, only iPhone uh, well again they were originally uh, objective C and now they're saying Swift is the way you gotta go so okay now I gotta relearn Swift so okay I'll go to Android they've been with Java for years but again you might not profit as much uh, because of the sort of the culture and I don't even want to touch Windows they don't have Windows phones no but they're getting it they're getting their Windows 10 operating system into tablets and um, portable devices and holographic devices and augmented reality and virtual reality and so forth so it still behooves us to try to target all the platforms uh, and that's a challenge because it's a different language each one well the way that's solved in this class, if you go over to cordova.apache.org, let's go to cordova.apache.org. Apache Cordova, mobile apps with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript target multiple platforms with one code base free and open source and it works on all the platforms Android iOS Windows and what's this one again Blackberry. Blackberry yes so if you want to be ironic you can put your app on a Blackberry <laughs> which uh, just a few months ago they have officially 0% market share how the mighty have fallen Remember when uh, President Obama would swear by his Blackberry when he first came into office and everyone wanted a Blackberry and now you can't give them away. So that's what happened with um, the, the rise of Android and, and iOS. You, you could say, well, Blackberries were the first big, uh, were the first big mobile device, uh, that cool little keyboard. Um, but they've gone down to officially zero market share and last I saw, Windows is at like 0 0.9 on mobile devices. On desktop devices, they've got like 90% market share. 85, 90, whatever market share. Well, with Cordova, we have a tool here that will allow us to reuse our code, will allow us to give support uh, to all the platforms and access the native features of every platform. I want to write HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That's a web project. But via Cordova, basically, it converts it behind the scenes into the right language for the right platform. Um, and this project here is open source. Again, you don't need to 
pay for the licensing of it and all of that. You're free to use it. And it says here, get started and so forth, installing Cordova. Cordova command line runs in Node.js and is available on NPM. Now, how many of you understood that right now? Node.js NPM command line. One person, two people. So, um, okay, here's a little, here's a little challenge. Um, right now we're using Windows. Open the command prompt on your computer. Many of you are like, what is that? Well, what is that is the command prompt. The command prompt is that. This is the command prompt. That looks like DOS. That looks like 30-year-old computer interface. Yes. Um, even though we're in Windows and we press buttons and drag and drop and all of that behind the scenes, we can still get into this. And we can type in commands. Ooh, look at this, I'm hacking the Pentagon. So this is the command prompt. This is um, uh, you type commands, and the computer does something. This is what Cordova is currently saying. Command lines runs in Node.js and is available on NPM. Follow platform-specific guides, etc. Open a command prompt terminal and type npm install g Cordova. So it's giving us these commands here that we're going to type in the command prompt. Well, when this Cordova project uh, was first released, like five or six years ago, this is, this is the way to do it. If you wanted to create a cross-platform app based in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you'd need to have a little bit of familiarity and comfort in the command prompt. Um, and for like 95% of the population, the command prompt is extinct. Um, you, I want to press a button, I want to right click, I want to drag and drop. For some software developers and app developers and web developers, this is still around. I still use this for other projects, but for most people, this is completely archaic and extinct. But for Cordova, it's the backbone of how you would make an app. You would type this command here. This would install the Cordova software. You don't download anything, double click, and run through an installation. You would type a command. You don't have to do this, but this is the example. Then after that, you run the Cordova app. You don't double click on a Cordova icon on the desktop. You type Cordova, and then you type Create, and then you type the name of your app. It does stuff behind the scenes. Then you type Cordova Platform Add, and then you would add iOS, or the browser, or Android, or BlackBerry. You would be typing a command to do these steps of adding these features to a project. And then you would run the project, etc. So when I was teaching this class, when I started to, uh, to teach it in 2013, it's five years now, this is what the first several years was, that we would uh, have to get a little familiar with the command prompt and type these commands and people would get frustrated all the time because oh I misspelled it I misspelled Cordova I put the V in the wrong place and the command prompt is not forgiving at all you type it wrong and it's wrong it doesn't work you might get an error you might get an error that makes sense or usually an error that doesn't make sense so it was a lot of a struggle in, in the old days the old days five years ago now because we're in the future there's a much easier way to do all of this Let's go over to visualstudio.com. Visualstudio.com gives you then the ability to buy or download um, Microsoft Visual Studio, uh, which is a graphical user interface where you write your code, you test on devices, etc. on Windows or Mac. You don't have to be in the command prompt. It shields you from all of that. Behind the scenes, that stuff is still happening. But then we have a nice, uh, pretty interface, a powerful editing environment, and uh, code hinting, and all of that great stuff. And the difference is that um, we have, <laughs> right here, under download, we have Community Professional Enterprise. We're not a big company, so we wouldn't do enterprise. <coughs> um, 
we have community and professional, and uh, we would want community. Now, there's going to be a lot of uh, software and steps and stuff to do, but I've got handouts. I've got uh, one and two page documents that I've written together that go through all of this step by step. Right now we're talking about in theory. You don't have to do anything just yet. I'm going to have step by step things to, to do to set up because even though it's getting easier and easier, it still needs set up, it still needs a little guidance. And what we're, what we're going to cover the first few class meetings is simply setting up the environment. Uh, we're going to get back to the, our project from last month, of course, and keep adding to it. But in the beginning, we have to set this stuff up. In these computers, it's all set up. It's ready to go. On your own home computer, you're going to need to set up a variety of things. And I'm going to have handouts for you to follow step by step to do. Um, but what the big idea is, we're going to use Cordova via Visual Studio Community Edition to convert our apps, our web projects, into mobile apps that work on all devices that are real apps that will go to the real app stores not just a website that is a web project. This is going to be a real app because it's also going to be able to access device features, native device features, camera, vibration, sound, geolocation, accelerometer, flashlight, whatever. It's going to be able to access all of the features of a real device and, all the, and we just need to do it by writing the right um, code, which is usually JavaScript. We write the right JavaScript. Visual Studio will translate it, basically, to the right device-specific code. And then you've got geolocation. You've got accessing contacts. You've got sending a tweet in your app. All that good stuff. Um, so we're going to be referring to the Cordova documentation often. We're going to be referring to the Visual Studio documentation often. We're going to be referring to the Android or Apple or Windows documentation. It's a lot of moving parts. And honestly, part one, that was easy. Part two and three is going to get a little more complicated. But it's still going to be a continuation of writing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But at least now we're going to be able to use real devices. How many of you brought a real device today? How many of you also brought your cable today? If you didn't, that's OK. Um, you will need to, if you're going to bring your own device, you're going to need to bring your cable as well. Uh, to transfer the app from the computer to the device, you need your USB cable. If you don't have a device, like I said, I've got at least 10 of them to check out. And the ones that I've got I have been tested to work perfectly good in the lab. If you bring your own, we'll probably have to maybe do some tweaks and such just to make sure it works. We're not going to jailbreak your phone or anything like that. We're not going to void its warranty or anything like that. We just need to activate developer features. And we'll talk about all of that. And I'll have step-by-step -step handouts for you. And so I fully predict that you know the first couple of class meetings will be pretty slow as we get ourselves up to a certain base level to use the new software that we're going to talk about. Questions so far? Any questions? Let's look at one more thing, then we'll uh, start getting hands-on. Go back to the Cordova website, and on the top, click on Documentation. If you have nothing better to do, I would recommend, here's your textbook. Here's all the various chapters of your textbook. Therefore, this is what you're going to read and study for the as the class goes on and also for the eventual assessment of the class. Um, I would love it for you to read everything because we have a whole month plus spring break. You've got something to do on spring break now, right? But we will see as we go on, we will see the most important parts to focus on. Like I don't really need to learn how to do it for Blackberry, so you can skip that I guess. But via Cordova, we will be able to make apps that run on Android, iOS, 
OS 10, you're going to be able to make full Mac apps, not just iPhone or iPad apps. You're going to be able to make Windows apps, Windows 10 apps, even Ubuntu, which is Linux. So you will be able to make your app be fully compatible with every device if you read the documentation. Scroll down on the left chapters and we're going to see a section of plugin APIs. So plugins are a way for our humble web project to be able to access the features of a device. How to make our, our app vibrate? Let's go check that one out for a moment. On the left side, click vibration. Um, this is going to say, OK, what the general idea is, read more, how to use it, how to install it. Again, this documentation is going to mention the command prompt. You go to Cordova, you type plugin, add this plugin. We're going to be able to do a version of that in Visual Studio with a couple of clicks. But after we've got that plugin installed, we see that we have these various objects and methods and properties, um, JavaScript syntax, basically. And uh, we're gonna, it's going to tell us what platforms are supported. So if you want to use vibration, we, we have these various types of vibration that will work on all of these platforms. We have these other kinds of vibration that only work on these platforms. Standard vibrate. Navigator.vibrate time. Or navigator.vibrate time. When we read this documentation, a lot of technical documentation like this is in the same sort of syntax in that, does anyone know, perhaps, what is the difference between these two commands? Looks exactly the same. Yeah. It would, it would <clears throat> seem like an array. Yes. Um, in the documentation, oftentimes parentheses uh, mean optional. Optional. So this is just something we'll get used to as we look at the documentation. Sometimes it'll say there's a command with an optional parameter. So technically here you can write navigator.vibrate plus a time unit or navigator.vibrate no time unit and it'll have some sort of standard default, whatever the device default might be. And in this case, the parameter being put into this method of this object is time in milliseconds. What's a millisecond? How long is a millisecond in real seconds? 1,000 milliseconds is one second. So in this case, if I want a vibration of three seconds, it's 3,000 milliseconds. If I want a two and a half second vibration, that is 2,500. Yeah. If I want a five and three quarters length of vibration, how much is that? 5,750 five and three quarters. Um, so that is just a preview of some of the uh, documentation we'll look at. Uh, we, we see there's the standard vibration syntax. There's a navigator object and a vibrate method. We've talked about objects and methods in JavaScript already, and we'll keep talking about it. Um, there's various ones. Vibrate with pattern. This is for Android only. So if you use this code, it's only going to work for iPhone and Android. And you have to take into account what if someone is on an iPhone, this might not work for them. So we'll cover that stuff. Vibrate with pattern is um, right here. Vibrate and then in an amount of time. One second vibrate, then another second, then three seconds, then one second, then five seconds. A pattern. Cancel vibration, not supported in iOS. And there's the old uh, navig uh, notification vibrate deprecated. Deprecated means it's old code. Any of that old code, just skip it. Don't even learn that. It's deprecated. Um, but it's there for completion. Deprecated, never mind. 
So via JavaScript, simply, it's going to be something like um, on click navigator.vibrate 3000. So that means a button gets pressed, vibration happens three seconds. And if you were to copy and paste this code into your code from last month, it wouldn't work because it's not fully set up. You can't simply just copy and paste this code into your code from last month because we haven't set ourselves up in the software platform. But once that's set up, then yes, simply writing this code in your project from last month will make it vibrate after we set, after we set up. So we'll be looking at all of these. Let's look at one more. Dialogues. There's a plugin to create dialog boxes. So this plugin provides access to some native dialog UI elements via a global navigator.notification object. So user interface ele elements, native dialog elements. Uh, we had a dialog, a few dialog boxes last month, things that popped up. We had um, alert to make a basic alert. We had prompt to ask for the person to type something in. Those were uh, input elements related to a web browser, which didn't, which might not look quite right on a device. It might look too simple or non non-native, non-device style. So we have a Cordova plugin that will give us access to make pop-ups that look like they're the right device. I don't have to style them with any special CSS. They will automatically look correct on Android or iOS or Windows or Mac or whatever. So we would have something like over here, navigator.notification.alert to make an alert box that looks better than the built-in one that we used previously, or a confirm. Remember we did confirm when we asked, are you sure you want to log out? It was a confirm box. And that one looked fine in the web project. But when we get it into a native project, it might not quite look right. So instead, we have to use this Cordova version, which will automatically style itself per device. Various option, uh, various required ones, various optional ones. So, for example, here something pops up. You are the winner, and the button will say um, "done," and the box at the top will say "alert" or will say "game over." We weren't able to do that with our knowledge so far of plain JavaScript. So lots of documentation on a technical level. You don't really need to know them all. I don't need, if my app doesn't access the file system, I don't need to know that. And really, you don't need to have these things memorized. I was just kind of fooling you earlier about read all of this. No, you don't really have to read it all. If you want to know the most detailed things of things, there it is for you to read it. Uh, my app is never going to access the device contact, so I don't need to know it. But you need to know where to look it up in case you do need to do it later. And that's cordova.apache.org, which is in the syllabus. And I don't see anything here that mentions Bluetooth. What if I want my app to access Bluetooth? Well, the great thing about Cordova is that it comes with this set of like 20 plugins that let you do these common things. And because it's open source, a lot of other developers are out there creating new plugins, new features, new ways for your humble web project to interact with a device. So there's a different um, plugin out there to turn on Bluetooth or access a Bluetooth speaker or do something with Bluetooth. Or maybe I need to scan QR codes. Or maybe I need to do something extra. There's a plugin for that. Somewhere someone has developed a plugin. Some uh, some third party has developed a plugin for you to add those extra features. So we'll cover all of that uh, the default plugins as well as native plugins. So a lot to think about. Questions? 
Yeah. Without using the Cordova, uh, use the example of the dialogue in API, um, bringing up the uh, notification alert. So if you didn't, if we didn't use this method to use it uh, to make that pop up look native, hmm. would it still would it still work? It would still work. Yes, the previous code from last month will all still fully work, but to put the polish on it, we have Cordova. So yeah, it'll still work. Would you say this? Uh, Cordova, Cordova documentation is similar to jQuery libraries, libraries? Yeah, I would think about it that way. Cordova is, in a sense, yes, a JavaScript library. You write the right code in JavaScript, the library kind of kicks in, and just like with jQuery, we wrote a shortcut for a longer JavaScript command. In a sense, we're sort of doing that right here. If we want a dialog box, a native dialog box, we have navigator.notification.alert, which is a shortcut because then what Cordova does basically then translates that to the appropriate version of Java, Objective C, C Sharp, whatever the other platforms use. So yeah, it's a kind of a library. Yes. So basically, you have access to this. You have Cordova is open source. It's like the foundation of so many other things. This Microsoft's version of Cordova sort of is their new Visual Studio. There's other ones also. Um, uh, what's another one? Intel XDK, I believe. So Intel has a version that they've got their version of Cordova. Uh, there's another one also, uh, other people might have heard about this one, Adobe PhoneGap. So Adobe's version of Cordova with their own software versions and a lot, of, a lot of companies have used Cordova as their foundation to do their own thing, but everything comes back to Cordova basically. So if I know how to use the raw Cordova, I can do a lot of things the other ways. So it's sort of like Microsoft's skin on it or Intel's skin or Adobe's skin. Let's take a quick, uh, uh, let's take a little test drive of Visual Studio, then we'll take a break. Uh, as I said, um, I've got documentation for you um, to, <coughs> to use uh, when you want to set this up at home because you don't have this automatically at home and it's set up for us here in the lab of course, but at home you're going to need to set it up. So you might have noticed this whole time there, there was an icon there, Visual Studio. If you've never noticed it, hey, look, it's Visual Studio. So you can either get it from the desktop or uh, from the uh, com uh, from Start menu. Go ahead and start Visual Studio 2017. It's either on the desktop or search for it. Visual Studio Community 2017. Emailed to us. Which part? Nope, it is big software. It's in the, it's in the, uh, like I said, I'm going to give you a handout for you how to install it at home. So when this starts up, it may ask you to sign in to an account. Did it pop up like that? Did it pop up for anyone like that, like me, that it says sign in or anything? Most likely it'll do that because uh, this says 30-day uh, trial evaluation. This was installed at the beginning of the year in the lab. 30 days are up. Now, yes, it is completely free. It's not that you then have to buy the full version after 30 days. But it only requires that you have a Microsoft account. So Outlook.com, Live.com, your Xbox account, I guess. Uh, so if it got up to this point, it won't let us progress until uh, we sign in. I don't think it says any more trial days left. So one um, thing that we're going to do then for the class, if you don't have an account, you're going to need to create an account. You can make it up completely free. Um, so if, if this is what we need to do right now. We'll do this and then we'll take a break in a, in a bit. So either sign in if you've got an existing Microsoft account or click sign up. Take a moment to sign up. And then I'll show you what Visual Studio is about.
So just um, if it asks you to sign in or sign up, just sign in, and then when we get to this sort of welcome screen, I'll, we'll go on from there. So take a moment, create an account, or sign in. set this up, I'll just mention a couple of things. Um, the software is completely free to use. It does ask for an account, which is free. If you, when you download this at home, so again, I'm going to give you a handout that has all of this. Right now, we're just kind of do it freestyle for the moment. But uh, when you set this up at home and you click Remind Me Later, it'll remind you in 30 days and then in 30 days you, you have to sign in with some account or it'll want to shut down so you're not gonna need to pay for this at all you're just gonna need the account and this uh, software we're gonna spend some time to get used to it and ultimately the purpose of it is we're gonna write code here HTML CSS JavaScript we're gonna press the right buttons and then Visual Studio will convert your web project into the platform that's the short answer. There's a lot of other stuff behind the scenes, but behind the scenes, Visual Studio is using Cordova. It's uh, using this JavaScript library that translates JavaScript into Java, Objective C, Swift, C Sharp, etc. And it makes fully real, authentic apps for testing or deployment that will then go off to the app stores. So the apps here. Uh, if you recall from last month, we saw the examples of student work, real copies of their apps over on Amazon. Uh, I'll mention why Amazon later, but you'll be able to put your app on Amazon, on iTunes Store, on Google Play, on Windows Marketplace, Windows Store, whatever they call it. You'll be able to put your project on all the real app stores. But there's still a lot of moving pieces we need to talk about. And in general, the class is the three parts the three parts of the class are all of the puzzle pieces that I would see that weren't really collected together if you wanted to learn this on various online tutorials and videos and all of that all of the parts weren't quite collected together plenty of tutorials out there on learning JavaScript plenty of tutorials on learning how to program iPhone plenty of tutorials for all of that stuff but this class's big purpose was to tie together in three months three parts all of the puzzle pieces for you to make apps and as I said on the first month honestly in the three months you're not gonna make the next Facebook you're not gonna make the next you know huge app and even in three months six months or so it it maybe if you stay up all night you have a lot of Red Bull you might be able to make an amazing uh, app but a lot of us that might have started off with not a lot of experience it's gonna still be a learning process even after the three-month class you will be able to make an app you will be able to access device features you will have more experience in programming but these big apps Instagram Facebook you know all of these big apps are have a team of developers and engineers and programmers and designers and marketers and a company with hundreds of dollars thousands millions of dollars and I'm trying to dis I'm not trying to dissuade you of course I'm just saying that if you are the if you are the app developer for your app and your it's just you, you need to program it, you need to debug it, you need to design it, you need to do icons, you need to do the marketing, all that great stuff, and you're going to learn it all. Um, the pieces in these three months, what you create out of it, all, all, out of all of that, of course, is is up to you. We're all going toward the goal of the CBDB app. We started last month, so we have some goal that we can reach. And beyond that, um, you add more pieces to the puzzle. All right, so hopefully you got to this point. If you're not quite there, just uh, follow along. But OK, we get the Get Started screen. We get a bunch of links about, here's what's new. Check this out, developer news. Again, uh, instead of uh, you know watching more TV, read right here. And uh, you'll educate yourself more on this stuff. Okay, here's what we want to do. Let's go up to the File menu. Let's go to New, Project. 
file new project. I sign me. I'll help you in a moment. Just follow along for the moment. So um, this project that we're about to create here, it doesn't matter what this is. Um, this is just a quick testing project. Um, but notice on the left side there are various templates. Uh, JavaScript templates, TypeScript, other projects. Under JavaScript, we have a mobile project. Java, uh, Visual Studio is such a big software, it can be used to make mobile apps, games, desktop software, server apps. There's a lot of packages that you could install. And in this lab, we have the mobile app package, so that's the only option. You can, un you can install various other packages to do various other software. We don't need it in this class, it's not here. So, uh, mobile app, blank uh, project down here. Don't have to, you don't have to change anything really. This project, you don't have to save it in your flash drive. This, this is just a throwaway project to kind of see this. Name of the project, whatever, location, it's going to be saved in your documents folder. To put it on the desktop flash drive, whatever, but it, we're not going to keep it. The name of the project, same thing. So I'm not changing anything. I'm just picking these defaults and then click OK. So it's going to take a moment to put together a solution, which is a folder with a variety of pieces of uh, code and such. And you might see a um, like a welcome screen for even more things, preview it, build native, add services, offline, authentication, publish, so still lots of things to look at. But at the very top here, debug Android simulate. Click on that little green icon. That'll start to simulate this project in a virtual device. We'll get a bunch of feedback of stuff happening behind the scenes. Visual Studio accessing Cordova, basically. Setting up the code, deploying to web browser, to Google Chrome. Yes? Just one, just one moment. So eventually, when this loads up here, device is ready. This is the home screen of a soon-to-be app. And so what I wanted to show up to this point, then we'll take a break, is that via Visual Studio, uh, we're going to write our code, we're going to test our code, we're going to deploy, we're going to troubleshoot. Eventually we're going to plug in a device and see our project on a device. A lot of things we'll, we'll talk about. But this is what we're going to spend a lot of time in, in this part of the class, in this new development environment. We're not going to use Notepad++ anymore. We're going to graduate out. We're going to graduate up to Visual Studio 2017, where we have a code editor and a style sheet um, <coughs> viewer simulator devices ready. So imagine that that's a device. Imagine that the app is running on a device. This is devices ready. Um, I'm going to close that browser window to go back to Visual Code. If it worked, great. Let's take a break. It's 7.10. We'll come back at 7.20. Maybe poke around in here a moment. We'll look at it, of course. If it didn't work, I'll help you out. But um, we're going to start to use Visual Studio Code for our projects now.